Today is a unique day, and it's far bigger than we think, because there are many different kinds of mothers, and all are being honored today. For the mother who's chosen to stay at home while her children are little, may your patience be great and your influence even greater. For the single mom who never planned on doing this alone, may you be consistently strengthened by your Heavenly Father, and may you hear His voice singing over you. For the mother who strives to balance work outside the home with love inside the home, May you be given energy, validation, and hope as you make the leap from one world to another every day. For moms who had poor mothers themselves, but who now refuse to let that pattern repeat itself, may the godly legacy you've started be carried on for generations to come. For mothers with grown adult children, may today be filled with laughter and joy and may you experience deep satisfaction and fulfillment. For women who have no biological children of their own, but who mother younger women as mentors, may you understand your role as a calling from God and as a transformation of their hearts. Today is a unique day, so for all the mothers we mentioned, and even those we didn't, be blessed, be honored, be filled with joy. You are making the world a better place because you're filling it with a love that only a mom can give. Well, I wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms here today and grandmothers. Uh, we're all grateful for our moms for giving us life and nurturing and loving us. Well, I probably goofed when I uh, titled my sermon today, Jesus on Hating Our Mothers. My wife, Joy, said, oh, yeah, that makes me want to come. <laughs> so I was trying to grapple with Jesus' statement, Luke 14, 26. He says, if any comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple." Uh, this is the second in a series of messages called, What Did Jesus Mean? Uh, this is a hard saying of Jesus. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, he cannot be my disciple. What does Jesus mean? Uh, let me suggest three things. One, he cannot mean we are to dishonor our mothers. Uh, in the Ten Commandments, God says, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And then the Apostle Paul picks up on that in Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. So clearly God wants us to honor our mothers, not hate them. Moses says in Deuteronomy 27, Cursed is anyone who dishonors their father or mother. Solomon says, Proverbs 20, If someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. Uh, in Proverbs 1.8, Solomon writes, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. So our mothers give good advice, and we're supposed to listen to them, far from hating them or dishonoring them. When Jesus was on the cross, he was hanging there on the cross, and his mother was standing watching with some other disciples. John tells us, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, that's John, Standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. In other words, John, and to the disciple John, Here is your mother. From that time on, John took her into his home. I mean, this is an unbelievable scene. Jesus is strapped to a cross. He's gasping for air. He's bleeding and sweating profusely. And yet he's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about his mother. He loves her. He honors her. 
God designed mothers to play a significant role in our lives spiritually. Moses says in Deuteronomy 4, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. He's talking about to the Israelites who God brought out of the land of Egypt and they saw all these miracles in Egypt like God turning the Nile into blood and the swarm of flies and it, it getting pitch dark in the middle of the day. Don't forget all those things you saw, what God did. Teach them to your children and to your children after them. In other words, children and grandchildren. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb. Horeb is where God gave the Ten Commandments. When he said to me, assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. Both fathers and mothers are supposed to teach God to their children, but especially mothers seem to pick up that role. Paul, when he's writing to Timothy, his disciple, his last book of the Bible, last letter he writes, says to Timothy, my dear son, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois. And in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. How did Timothy hear about Christ first? From his grandmother and his mother. God honors mothers and wants us to honor our mothers. So what does Jesus mean when he says, you cannot be my disciple unless you hate your mother? Second, I think he means our relationship with him must take precedence over our relationship with our mother. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, such a person cannot be my disciple. How do we reconcile th these words of Jesus with his calls to honor our mothers and our fathers and love our wife and our husband and nurture our children? In Semitic languages like Hebrew and Aramaic, which Jesus spoke, People, did not commu people communicated in black and white, not shades of gray. So when Jesus called us to love him and hate our family, it's not so much a call to hate our family, it's, it's that we love him so much that by comparison, it's as if we hate our family. Does that make sense? If your mother taught you to love God and follow Christ, that's a good thing. But sometimes commitment to Christ will take you away from the faith of your parents. Jesus said, do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against the, uh, each other. Three against two and two against three. They'll be divided. Father against son, son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus says, I've come into the world, the Son of God, and present to you who I am, and I'm going to bring division. Because in some family, maybe the father will believe in me, but the mother will not. Maybe the daughter will believe in me, but the son will not. So a family's divided over Jesus. You may come from a family that's like that. Not everyone is a believer in your family. Rifka Berry, in her book, Hiding in the Like, tells about growing up in, uh, as a, in a strong Muslim home in Sri Lanka. At the age of 11, her family moved to New York City. At the age of 13, uh, they moved to Columbus, Ohio, the home of the infamous Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh... When she got to Columbus and she went to the public school for the first time, she met some Christians. And one girl invited her to come to her church. Well, she knew her parents would never let her go, so she sneaked off with her friend. And when she was sitting there in this youth worship service, it just kind of it overwhelmed her, the love of God. And then she heard a message and... She said, this is so different from what I've been taught all my life. This seems like the real thing. And so when the youth pastor said, 
come forward if you want to. It was kind of like one of those slanted floors. She, she walked forward and she stumbled. She couldn't even make it. Her legs gave out from under her and somebody helped her and she committed her life to Christ. Well, she knew she couldn't tell her parents. They'd already been terrible to her in her upbringing years. They knew that she, that she, they would beat her or probably kill her. And so she left her family. Hardest part was leaving her little baby brother, Raja. Now, Bill Qureshi tells much the same story in his book, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. He grew up in a strong Muslim home. When he got to college, he became friends with a, gay, a guy named David. They were kind of fellow nerds that spent a lot of time in the lab together, and they became great friends, inseparable. Well, David was a strong Christian, and so they began to talk about faith, and you know, there were arguments at first, and ultimately David convinced uh, Nabil that he should take a look, and so he studied Christian faith, and he found that Jesus died on the cross. And that Jesus believed that he was the Son of God and claimed to be the Son of God. And that Jesus was raised from the dead. And there's great evidence for that. He also found, as he studied Islam in more detail, that Muhammad was not a man of peace like he claimed to be. And so he became a Christian. And he was cut off from his family. So commitment to Christ can mean sacrifice. I mean, commitment to anything requires a sacrifice. Uh, when our son Tad, Tad is over here, our oldest son uh, was young, he uh, was an excellent basketball player. I remember coming to one of his fifth grade basketball games and uh, I got there about 90 seconds into the game and it was 8-0. So I leaned over to one of the other fathers and I said, who scored? And he said, Tad, 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 and Tad. So I learned to show up on time for games. But Tad got very good at basketball, not just by accident. Um, he worked at it. I, from, from his youngest age, when he was three, he could start dribbling a ball and sh shoot it up toward the basket. He was playing all the time at our house. And then we went to kindergarten. You know, he, every recess, every lunch, he would be out there shooting hoops in the, the covered basketball area. He was by himself. His other friends didn't come out, first grade, second grade. It wasn't until about third grade that some of the other boys started joining him. Commitment to anything requires sacrifice. We do no one a favor when we present salvation in Jesus as an all gain and no loss proposition. If we tell people, if you give your life to Christ, you'll have love, joy, peace, and blessings, and everything's going to go better for you. If you give him $10, he'll give you back $20. we are appealing to their self-interest. It's true that God offers us many promises in the Bible. You give to me and I'll give back to you even more. That's true. But it's wrong to only tell people about the benefits of knowing Jesus. Rivka Berry and Nabil Karishi gave up their families and friends and risked their lives to follow Christ. We have to tell people about the costs. You may be cut off by family or friends. God may require you to suffer. Luke 14, 27, Jesus says, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Death on the cross is what Jesus did to save us from our sins. Carrying a cross is what he calls us to do in order to make a difference for God's kingdom in this world and to bring other people to Jesus. He means they're is probably going to be a price to pay. So we are to love Christ so much that by comparison, it's as if we hate our family. Our love for him is that much more. Well, what else does Christ mean? Three, once we put Christ first, he can bless us and help us have a better relationship with our mother or with our father or with our wife or with our husband or with our children. Now, this is maybe the most important thing that I want you to get today. His call in our lives is for us to put all our hope in Him. He says there is no one else in this world you can build your life on. You can't build your life on your husband 
or your wife. You can't always count on your mother or your father or your kids. There is no one else you can build your life on. He says he's the only one that is a, a foundation worthy to put your weight on. But once we put all our hope in him and we don't have a foot in both sides, then he says he will bless us and take care of us. Peter said, Jesus, we've given up everything for you. Gave up our families, our homes to follow you. And Jesus answers, Matthew 19, 29, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much, and will inherit eternal life. God loves us, and he loves to give to us. He loves to make us happy. Once he sees that we put him first in our lives, often he will bless us and help us improve our relationships with our mother, or all relationships. It may be that he'll help us by changing us, helping us make better decisions. Marianne, I'd like you to come on up here. I'd like you to meet a mom who has been blessed by God with good relationships, and I want all the kids to come too uh, that are here. And uh, I'm nominating Marianne as the mother of the year at Portland Community Church. Marianne also serves as our wedding coordinator here at the church. Here we go. So, Marianne, you raised four kids, Lori, mm -hmm. Kate, and uh, Matt and Anna. Yep. And uh, Lori's married to Heath, and uh, Anna's married to Marcus. Marcus. Uh, so you raised your kids, mm -hmm. you know, ready to empty nest and... <laughs> And in this last year, uh, some things uh, took place in uh, Kate's life where she asked you if you could take care of her kids, or you offered, I don't know, so Isaiah, Camille, and Max mm -hmm. stayed with you. Kate has been with you many, some, many weeks. Um, and then Matt, um, for a season, with his daughter Laura, has mm -hmm. been living with you. So, you know, you have like a pretty full house. Yes, I do. It's kind of like, uh, feels like the Kincaid house to me, you know, <laughs> we have nine kids and uh, I'd say the last 20 years we've probably, the, the lowest we've ever been is maybe five at home yeah. and we've had many, many nights where it's 10, 11 and we've had our married kids even for seasons in uh, staying with us. So you're into the chaos zone like the Kincaid zone right now. That's right. Right. All right. So, uh, so I say good for you that you have helped your grandkids and and been a, um, a mom to them uh, that is that's uh, signing up for a lot so that's why mother of the year okay Thank you. so t tell us this uh, Marianne um, maybe tell us what's one thing you've done really well as a mom where you say you know uh, okay I think I got that one right or I'm doing that one right well um, firstly I married Dale Wave Dale. He, he made me tell, say that. Um, <laughs> no, but honestly, um, he, uh, he's, my, he's my, my partner in crime. He uh, has been a wonderful father, wonderful grandfather, and wonderful stepfather, which is a very difficult job. And so um, I would say that was probably a good thing that I did. Um, Another thing um, that I've, I've tried to do is to never, never give up on my children or my grandchildren. And when you feel like giving up, um, I think the best thing to do is to pray. And uh, that kind of gets you back where you need to be, um, you know, to pray for your grandchildren uh, and, and hopefully make them understand that uh, a relationship with Jesus is really the only way to go in life. Um, we're, we're here a short time and uh, compared to eternity, and uh, eternity is a long time. So to me, the most important thing a, m a mother and a father need to do is uh, teach their children about Jesus, and, and uh, hopefully they will come to accept him as their Lord and Savior. 
Well, that's certainly part of God's plan for, uh, it started out with the people of Israel who were representing him in the world, and now people who uh, call themselves followers of Christ. One of the most important roles as a mother is to pray for your kids yep. or lead them to Christ. So yep. good going. All right, to keep this real, why don't we uh, go to the other side and what's something if you could have a do-over, you'd say, you know, I probably wasn't the best mom mm -hmm. with that or maybe I'm not doing that very yeah. well. Yeah, well, I can think of a lot of things, but um, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I think the, the one thing that uh, comes to my mind and my heart first is that I wish that I had spent a little more time playing with my children and, uh, and my grandchildren also. Uh, grandchildren are kind of a second chance. And um, so that, that would be the thing. Instead of worrying about work and housework and all those things that moms do, um, I wish I'd just spent a little more time playing with my kids. Hmm. I identify. <laughs> I'm kind of a driver. I got 25 things I want to do every mm -hmm. day, and uh, maybe haven't stopped enough yeah. to. Lots of lists. Just be with Gotta the kids. Got to get those, and, check those lists yeah. off, yeah. All right, so let's go over here. So, uh, Matt and Anna, this are, uh, uh, Kate was here the first hour, but she had to go to work, and you guys are the third and fourth kids, all right? So, Matt, what, uh, can you share a story of um, something fantastic your mom did or did with you, a uh, way that she was awesome? Sure. Well, um, I'm a single dad, and um, and something that my mom has really helped me with. That that definition really doesn't work well. It's not a good label for me because I've always had my mom uh, to help me with my daughter, and um, and she's really. Um, I don't think my daughter would be the person she is today, as successful, as smart and beautiful as she is now, if it wasn't for my mom. And so, um, I just want to thank you for that now too. But. Um, yeah, that's, I guess that's the main thing. All right. Let's see. How about you, Anna? Something awesome your mom's done or? Yeah, well, I don't have children yet, um, but I'm the one kid that haven't blessed my mom with grandchildren. But what I'd have to say is that I have, I'm a soccer coach, so I go out every day of the week and I'm with my 40 girls. And so I'd have to say that I've really learned to be dedicated um, playing soccer and my mom dedicating herself to Matt and I, um, taking us to sports, sometimes two sports a day, um, driving us there and keeping us dedicated to what we committed to. And so now I'm able to commit myself to these girls and be a strong role model for them like my mom was for me. Hmm. All right, so how about uh, maybe something funny that your mom did or fun experience you had with her? What do you got, Matt? So, um, I don't know if you guys know about this, about my mom. She's actually pretty quick and uh, fast-wise, speed-wise. Um, 25 years ago, maybe more than today. But um, when we were kids, my mom was very big into respect and being respectful. And sometimes if we weren't, she had this metal spatula that she would get out. I don't know if she ever caught me and actually hit me with the spatula, but there were definitely lots of days doing this one around the uh, dinner table, but fast. Fast, so very quick. <laughs> How about you, Anna? She learned quickly that she couldn't chase us once we could get it off of her, so <laughs> that ended in our teenage years. Um, oh boy. Um, what I'd have to say is that I guess when I show up at the house, my name's Lori. This is Jack. Um, what? Jack is our dog, my parents' dog. <laughs> um, so my mom, throughout our life, we are always everybody else's name. I would get Dale, Lori, Kate, Matt, Anna, before she would get to me to tell me something to do, yep. or I don't know if I was being bad or whatnot. So she's always one to call everybody else their names, but she gets to it at one point. So. All right. yeah. <laughs> well, Marianne, uh, what, any, anything else you want to say to moms here, or potential moms, or grandmoms? Well, again, uh, again, I would just say um, you just just never give up. Uh, on your children or your grandchildren. Just um, always, always pray for them and uh, never give up. You just, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, something that you prayed about today or something that you said today could very well make a huge difference two years down the road. And so uh, always be positive and remember to not give up on your kids, not 
you know, think, oh, they're being bad, you know, because they might be, but things change quickly, so. All right. Well, let's give a hand to Marianne. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Right. Thanks, guys. All right, Jesus does not want us to dishonor our mothers, uh, but he wants us to love him so much that by comparison it almost looks like we hate our moms. All right? Once we put Christ first and decide he's the only foundation we're going to build our lives on and we can't build it on anyone else or anything else, then he blesses us and enables us to actually have better relationships with our moms or all our relationships. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, teaching us today. Lord Jesus, thank you for your uh, being our teacher today and helping us understand something you said years ago. And uh, we see that your call in our life is for us to put you number one, preeminent above all other relationships. And so I want to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus this morning and to make him first in your life. For you, maybe you've never done that before and you want to say, Jesus, I believe that you're God's son, that you were raised from the dead and I commit my life to you right today. Or maybe for you, you've done that at some point, but today you want to kind of underline that again and that he's first. You're not, nobody else is ahead of him. He's first in your life, uh, far above all others. Uh, would you make that commitment? I'll give you just a minute. Lord Jesus, thank you for helping us understand what you call us to do, and uh, we do want to commit our lives to you today as we go from here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.